Some people believe food comes from the supermarket. I'm not one of them. There we go, we are at a spot called Tugela. We're on the north bank of the Tugela River. And as you can see behind me, the water is chocolate brown. And I'm gonna throw for a cob. I'm expecting to, to, to catch a couple of flatfish, sharks, skates and sandies. But I'm gonna definitely throw a little bait for a, for a cobby or a snapper cob. Might even be a shad in this color water. And uh, nothing wrong with a live bait. So yeah, North Bank of Tugela, the mighty Tugela River, it's amazing. In the distance behind me you can make out the lighthouse. And uh, yeah, definitely one of the premier fishing destinations on the Natal coast at the moment. Very, very good fishing here. If you'd like to win one of our Catch Cook t-shirts valued at 500 Rand, please like and subscribe to our channel and comment on how you're enjoying the content down below. Alright, there we have just an edible tray, so I've got a grapnel sinker and I'm going to throw on the side of the bank and hold the bait on the bank. Just a 3 hook. The mustard ring soy, and I'm just going to put a chocker bait on there. Like I said, I'm just going to make a chocker bait. I always cut my chocker down his back. You can see where the point comes on the front, cut it down through the cartridge, and then split it open. Then I take the skin off. The skin feeds the crabs on the beach. Not much other use for the skin. I'm just gonna cut a piece of there. Don't leave your chocker on top of your bait box in the sun because it's just going to spoil it. I'm just gonna take two strips of chocker. Then I'm gonna beat them with my chocker mallet. With the flesh side up and the skin side down. Beat it quite well. The next piece, same thing. Okay, and then turn it over and you're going to break through the skin with a couple of good shots. You can see it's quite tough on the skin side. What I'm doing is I'm releasing all the oils and I'm making this bait really soft. And when I put it on the hook and cast it into water, it fluffs open. It's called a blob bait. And it's the cob's favorite. In this area in particular, the cob love the, the blob bait. And actually nothing else will say no to it, so most fish will eat it. And then you just thread it onto the hook. Thread it on until the shank's full. And then push it over the eye of the hook. And continue threading. You just create this like soft blobby bait. And then we're just going to slide that all down. And look at that. And it's soft and when it sits in the water it like pulsates with the water. Over there, <laughs> my mate uh, Brett has just gone tight with a, with a drone bait and it looks like a proper tight too. I'm still trying to catch a cob. He dropped a big flapped shad as bait and uh, it wasn't long and he's bending and bucking. So let's watch and see if he gets his fish out. Well, it's not a diamond that I'm sure of. Yep. <laughs> 
Brett sweating bullets there, that fish is taking a lot of line. It's uh, turned and <laughs> buggered off again. He gained about, got back about 100 meters, the fish took 200. It's kind of a, it's gonna be a tug of war for a while, so stay tuned. I don't know what this is. Uh, my guess is a, is a big uh, honeycomb, but it actually could be anything. There we go, it's all happening at the Gabba. <laughs> my chocolate blob bait was eaten while I was all filming fresh. Of the spectrum here. I got the baby I'm uh, fishing in the nursery and Brett's fishing in the in the deep water. So yeah there we go. It ate that chocolate blob bait. I thought I might have a little uh, cobby on but I couldn't feel any head shakes. Obviously not a cobby. And this is called a milk shark. You can see the nose. It's milky. Like I said that little nose. You can actually see the tip of his nose. Very very milky and that's why it gets its name milk shark. They don't think they get up to about six kilos, and this one's going back. Is that part going good? Yeah, that's just pulling really, really hard. It's, at the moment, it's coming in slowly, but the problem is every few, few minutes it takes back all the line that I've retrieved. But frustrating. Put on the big boy Brooks and fight the pain. Okay, Brett's setting absolute bullets here. <laughs> he's been on for an hour now and he's made absolutely no headway on this fish. He's <laughs> His line is still in deep sea. I don't know why we're laughing. <laughs> he's setting bullets. The Zulu and sun is burning us. Fortunately, there's a, there's a west wind that's picked up. A southwesterly which is keeping us a bit kind of wind chilled but not cool because the sun is so hot and the sand over there is so hot you can't walk barefoot on it so yeah the typical zulu land just the west that's blowing and uh we can't even venture a guess at what fish this is we just know it's a big fish <laughs> a proper fish look at his reel I'm getting emptier. <laughs> <laughs> the energy tanks are depleted. <laughs> and uh, the fish is quite close now. How are you feeling great? Hey, I'm bagging. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go see if I can grab this fish quickly. Well, at least wait till it gets closer so I can grab it. Slow. Just got to get it over the bank now and then we can grab the fish. Take your time, get him out. We've just uh, seen the fish, it's a massive sandy, which is a giant guitar fish. I had my suspicions about that. It is a proper fish though. And uh, it's my job to grab it in the shallow water. So now we just have to get him close enough to grab him. Brett's now been on for two hours and we're not, we've seen the fish, I've got my hands on the fish once. It's a very big sand shark. John Kitarfish, Brett's back is giving in. <laughs> his tackle's holding, his back's breaking. And we've got a dropping tide with a very strong rip on our right here, which we're now trying to rust, uh, tussle the fish out of. As you can see, Brett's trying all kinds of maneuvers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Two hours and 50 minutes and Fred is on the sand. And the fish, uh, that one got away. That sandy was so big I couldn't get my hands around the base of his tail. That thing is well in excess of 100 kilos. Stolso fin was about a meter out the water. That was enormous. Yo, it beat me up properly. Properly. Even got my hand. Even cut my hand on his uh, on his uh, prehistoric spikes that are on his back. Sure. But you know what? We touched the leader, we touched the fish, it's landed. We just don't have the photograph. All the measurements. Well done, Brett. That's just tough, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna call it a day now. <laughs> the sun is getting the better of us. The bite's gone away. There's a strong southeast wind blowing now, and we call that on this part of the coast. We call it the poison wind in the tell, even in the trans car. It's only when you get down to Port Elizabeth, East London, not even East London, Port Elizabeth and the Cape where a southeast is what you want to catch fish. On our coast the Zuland and the Tal Coast, if the southeaster blows, it puts the fish off the bite for whatever reason, flattens the sea out. And uh, yeah, so we, we're gonna head on home. And uh, I'm gonna prepare a nice shad. We had two shads that we brought with us, one pretty big one, and one small one that uh, Brett put out for bait. I think uh, I'm gonna keep the, the bigger one and actually prepare it for for a little snack later. Okay, what we have is, uh, this is a shad that we caught last night. Unfortunately, the catching of the shad um, is a bit of a failure. All we've done here is we've gutted the shad and we've pulled the scales out. It's been in the fridge since yesterday. And what I like about that is the meat gets nice and cold and nice and firm. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to remove the majority of the bones. So when you cook this fish whole, you don't end up with mouth a mouthful of bones. Quite a simple system. All you'll need is your knife. Here I'm using my interchangeable blade Havalon set. And that is uh, designed so that you can take the blade out, clean it, swap it for a longer or shorter blade. And it's just a push button. And then you just need a pair of a decent pair of scissors. In this case this is just a kitchen pair of kitchen scissors. And then quite simply all you do is you cut along the back bone on one side of it but just make an incision not too deep probably just a centimeter or so and just follow the back bone all the way down to the back and physically we're not going to physically take the whole fillet off we're just going to take out the ridge of bones that runs along the top here and that's the ridge of bones that causes all the small fine bones so we're going to do the same along the bottom section so from the gut cavity we're just going to run you can see where my knife's going nice and clean and simple just a centimeter or so into the flesh, not too much. Okay, so we've done that. And we're gonna flip the fish over and we're gonna do the same. And we're gonna take it and we do the other side of the across the back. What you can see there is we've basically cut either side of that backbone. And then quite simply we're gonna take the scissors, just go in there and start to trim out that piece. And you can actually, as you trim it out, you can hear you cutting through bone and that it's all bone you can feel the bones all running down from the back from the from the dorsal fin and then exactly the same at the bottom a hole where you can actually feel the bones and now when you cook this fish all you have is you have a couple of belly bones along this piece and then the rest of the flesh all with no bones in it whatsoever complete utilization of the fish apart from those two strips of bones so with that fish, something that goes really nice with fish is spring onions, fresh spring onions and chives. So I'm going to and some parsley. Okay, so I'm just uh, grabbing some some greens out of my veggie patch. What's nice is it's an organic ready, uh, organic veggie patch. I know what I've put into it. I know what I'm getting out. Nice and simple. We have parsley, we have chives, and we have some fresh spring onions. All out of all out of the organic veggie patch. Maybe what we'll do is grab some some of this. This will get on well as well. Still, we have our our shad, and then I've got my fresh herbs. All I'm going to do with these is I've got to chop them up. Yeah. 
the flesh of, of the shad is very delicate. It's a very, very delicious meat. You, you don't need to overshadow it with herbs and spices and fish spices. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And I use um, macadamia nut oil. You can use olive oil, you can use canola oil. So here we're gonna do this. We're just gonna score the, the one side of the shad. So basically from just behind the head, at an angle, we're gonna score down onto the backbone. So we're opening the flesh. And we're just gonna do three or four of those down the body. And what this does is it allows the herbs and the spices to get in there. We're gonna take a little bit of the oil. I'm just gonna massage that in with our fingers so it goes into the into the cuts and scores. And just get it all over because that helps the skin crisp up. And we don't want to waste it, we want to eat it, put it on the fins, and then take some of your chives, put them on there, some of your spring onions, and you can just push them into the grooves, and then some of your other chopped herbs. I'm just gonna sprinkle salt on there, a little bit of the pepper. We've put the, the salt, the pepper, the oil, and all those herbs on one side. We're just gonna grab the oven tray, and what I like to do is keep it off the base with a, with a rack. And we're gonna put the, we're gonna basically take that and spin it over and put that that way down. Exactly the same as what we did on the other side. Balance of the salt and pepper, which is now, you can just get that on there. Just get it into all the openings. And then the balance of the herbs and spices, or at least the herb, the fresh herbs. So basically what we're gonna do with this fish now is we're gonna stick it on the grill, quite low down in the oven, and then we're gonna grill it. And we're not gonna actually turn it over, we're just gonna leave it. The top's gonna go all crispy, and it's gonna cook right through with the heat in the oven. I guess that'll take about 10 to 15 minutes. You just gotta keep an eye on it. Once the top has crisped up, this, this fin is a, is a telltale sign. It gets all crispy and starts going brown and dark and the tail fin and then you know that the top is cooked and the bottom is cooked through because we've got the heat getting around then obviously with the oven closed and the heat from the oven it actually cooks fish the fish quite nicely all right so now all that's left is to get this in the oven and get it cooked i'm just going to pop it in the oven for 15 minutes under the grill all right so for the rest of this fish dish i'm going to just make a nice healthy salad so we're gonna once more be foraging in my garden here. I'm gonna grab a cucumber and some rocket. And we're gonna go make a lovely salad with uh, to accompany that fish. Cucumber. There we go. Just a nice little cucumber. Got some wild rocket growing here. We don't need much. Just wanna chuck some rocket into our salad. Okay, we have a bunch of rocket and a cucumber. All right, there we have our salad made with uh, quite a few greens out the garden and then we have our delicious fish look at that you can see what i said about the crispy fins they go crispy and that fish is cooked right through and that's whole fish one of the most delicious fish in the ocean in fact the, sh the humble shad or elf bon appetit Dinner's, dinner's done. Cheers, good night, have fun. Bye.